Okay, hello everybody. In today's video, we'll be discussing the aggregate, uh, one of the aggregate planning techniques called the graphical method. Right. So in this particular method, this is generally hit and trial method. I'm just going to be showing an example um, in this video. So uh, let's get started. Um, the question here we have uh, is a company called Juarez in Mexico. Uh, is a manufacturer of roofing supplies and has developed monthly forecasts for a family of products. The data for the six months period from January through June are presented in the following table. The table is not present there, so let me just show it to you guys. That's the table there, all right? So it's um, available in this particular table. Um, so the, uh, the, the firm would like to begin to develop an aggregate plan. So. Uh, they've given us some additional information here besides the, the information in the table. The, in, the information in the table basically is the monthly demand forecast, the number of working days in each month, right? Now, this might be equal um, in some questions, and sometimes it might differ from one month to another. You'll just have to, have to adjust it uh, in every single time. There is no one way of solving these types of questions. You have to kind of approach it with an open end. It's kind of a hit and trial uh, logic solving method, method right? So. Uh, and then we have the demand per day. Now, the demand per day simply is the the um, is the quotient. I'd say uh, it's basically the expected demand divided by the number of working days will give us the daily demand. Now, obviously, this is uh, rounded up to the nearest integer or nearest whole number because there should be some decimals here which I've ignored for right now. But it's I've just Rounded, up, rounded them up to the nearest whole number here. The total demand uh, for the over the next six months is 6,200 units, and we have a total of 124 working days, all right? So the numbers are, as you can see, is just given there. We have some additional cost information. We have the uh, inventory carrying cost is $5 per unit per month, okay? The subcontracting cost per unit is $20. So if we're not manufacturing it ourselves and we're getting a third party to manufacture it for us, it's gonna cost us $20 per unit, right? That's the, the average pay rate. So we're paying our workers $10 per hour and it takes 1.6 labor hours to manufacture one unit. So assuming that we don't have any material cost, in this particular example, just to make things a bit more simpler, we're assuming that there is no material cost in this and the only costs that are involved uh, to the product is the labor cost. So in this case, it takes us 1.6 hours to to, man, to to make one product and it costs us ten dollars per hour for labor therefore to, to manufacture that product within inside or internally it's, it's going to cost us sixteen dollars compare that to twenty dollars when you're trying to uh, subcontract it to somebody else right now the cost of increasing the daily production rate uh, is three hundred dollars per unit so this is the hiring cost okay so if you were to hire um, uh, somebody, uh, you, your, your workers, and you, you probably need to train them. You probably need to uh, make some expenses in terms of selection, all that stuff. And you probably need to make sure that that person is trained until he can ha he has the the level of productivity or efficiency that everybody else has. And to do that, it costs your company three hundred dollars, right? So that's the hiring costs. Now, the cost of decreasing the daily production rate. This is six hundred dollars per unit, which means that if you want to decrease the daily production by one you might have to lay off workers. So if you want to lay off workers, that means that you might have to pay them severance uh, for a couple of months extra pay. You might have re a reputational damage to your to your firm or whatever it is. Uh, we're assuming that the cost of uh, laying off people is $600 uh, per unit. So, th so this is not per worker. This is if you want to change the daily production by a certain number of units uh, per day, then this is the cost. Or it's, if the question is giving um, this, uh, the hiring and laboring, uh, hiring and layoff cost per worker instead of per units, you'll have to adjust your answer accordingly. All right. So we'll do some examples later on probably, but in this particular question, um, the information is given per unit. So keep that in mind. Another important thing is the daily working hours is eight hours per day. Um, that might come in handy, might not, not sure. Uh, but let's say that's, that's given there. So the question here is we need to compare the total costs of uh, using a pure level strategy with inventory adjustments uh, with that of using a level strategy with subcontracting and we need to compare that with a chase strategy using hiring and layoff so we have three different types of strategy for which we need to calculate the total cost and out of these three options the one that has the cheapest uh, cost is the one that we will select so this is a hidden trial method all right so 
uh, in the first option is to use a pure level strategy with inventory adjustment. So in this case, we'll be producing at a constant level throughout the entire 124 working day period. And uh, whenever we have a surplus, we maintain inventory and we use that in that inventory to uh, to uh, meet the demand when our demand exceeds production. Right. In the second case, when we're using a level strategy with subcontracting, we're going to produce at the minimum level or the minimum demand level, and whatever is excess to that, we will be using uh, subcontracting to meet that excess demand. Now, in the case of the third one, uh, chase strategy using hiring and layoffs, we will be trying to match the production um, with the demand exactly. And uh, to do that, we're, we're going to be increasing and decreasing our production levels by hiring and layoffs. So the cost to, to alter our daily production level is going to be uh, 300 to increase the daily production and 600 to decrease the daily production. So this is generally the costs that are involved. So let's look at the first case when um, we'll be using the level of production. All right. So in this particular case, uh, we can just uh, graph the, the, the demand pattern uh, as such. Right. So this is probably why this method is called the graphical method because, you know, you can make this graph and it's probably the only reason here I can think of. Uh, so the if we go back, uh, we can see that the the daily demand for January is 41. The daily demand for Feb is 39, for March 38, for April is 57, for May it's 68, and for June it's 55, all right? So we're going to plot that in a histogram uh, chart. So for January it was 41, for February it was uh, 39, for March it's 38, for April it's about 57, let me just check, yeah, 57, 68 for, for May, and uh, 55 for uh, June. So so this is the demand patterns, all right? So what we're going to try to do is manufacture at an average level here, right? And for the first three months, when we have excess demand over, uh, so excess production uh, over the demand, we will be increasing our inventory holdings. And for the next three months, when our demand exceeds the production, we will be using the stored up inventory here to meet the excess demand here. So the, the, the production level here, average, is going to be simply going to be given by the total average demand, right, uh, over the entire period, which is simply going to be calculated by dividing the total demand by the total number of working days, which comes out to be 50 units per day, right? So <clears throat> in the first case, we will be uh, using a level strategy with inventory adjustments, right? So this, is, this information is given to us. So we have the six months, the demand for the six months, 900 for January, 700 for, for February, 800 for March, 1200 for April, 15 for May, and 11 for June. So we have the demand information and we have the number of working days as well, right? This is production days, working days, almost the same thing, right? Uh, I've put the cost information on the side here, so just so we can reference it uh, when required. So in this particular strategy with inventory adjustments, we need to calculate how much inventory are we holding at the end of each month, okay? To do that, let's try to figure out our total production. So our production in this case uh, is first going to be, hang on, our production in this case, right, is going to be calculated by multiplying the production days by the production rate. The production rate per day, as we calculated before, was 50 units per day. This is the, the average production required to meet the demand, right? So uh, the production here is going to be given by 22 working days times 50 units per day is gonna give us a production of 1100 in January. Similarly, uh, 18 working days times 50 units is going to give us uh, 900 units of production. 21 units times 50 is going to give us 1050. Uh, same here. 22 times 50 is 1100 and 20 times 50 is 1000. So this is the, the production. So if we add the, the production over, it's going to give us the same thing as 6200 as well. So that's we're manufacturing exactly what's demanded at the moment. Now let's try to calculate the change in inventory. Now we're going to assume that the beginning inventory is zero at the moment. So let's say we started off with nothing in hand. The average demand uh, in this particular, uh, in January, the, sorry, the expected demand in January is 900 units. If we manufacture 1100, then our inventory is going to go up by 200, right? Because we have a surplus of 200 in this case. Similarly, in February, the demand is, nine, is 700. Our production is 900. So we'll be, uh, we, we also are going to have a surplus of another 200 units. In uh, March, we have a, demand of 800 and a pr production of 1050 so we have a surplus of 250 right so starting from april we have a demand of 1200 but a production of 1050 so in this case we have a deficit of 150 units in this case right in the case of may we have a um 
demand of uh, 1,500 and a production of 1,100. So we have a deficit of 400. So inventory levels goes down by 400. And in June, uh, it's 1,100 and 1,000 production. So it goes down by further 1,000, all right? So if I were to calculate the ending inventory, assuming the beginning inventory for the 1st of January was zero, it's going to be simply 200 for January because that's the surplus. On Feb, we had a sur further surplus of another 200, so the, the cumulative inventory on hand. So we had 200 to begin with. We had a further surplus of 200, so at the end of February, we are going to have 400 units on hand. Uh, March is going to be 400 plus 250, which is 650. In April, we have a deficit of 150, so we're, our 650 level is going to go down to 500. In May, we have uh, 500 units here, right? So, so. Um, uh, since we have a deficit of 400, it's going to go down to 100. And in June, we're going to use up that remaining inventory as well. So we're going to end up with zero. So overall, for each month, right, the holding cost per month is $5. So uh, the holding cost for January would be 200 times 5. For February, it would be 400 times 5 and all that stuff. So just, to, so just to make things easier, I'm just going to add them all up. It's going to be 1850. I can multiply simply that by 5, right? So in this case, the the cost of producing it internally or the, the production cost for the product is going to be uh, it's 1.6 labor hours times $10 per hour, right? That's going to give us a cost of $16 per unit times 6,200 units, uh, 6,200 units, which we are going to manufacture internally. That's, a, that's the sum of this column here, right? That's going to give us 99,200 as our production cost. Plus, since we're using inventory adjustment, we're going to have to incur additional costs to hold the inventory, and that's going to be given by eighteen thousand, sorry, 1850 times $5 of holding cost, which will give us 9250 So in this case, the total cost using this particular level strategy with inventory adjustments is going to be 108450 Okay, so uh, let's save that number out there just so that we can refer to it later on. All right, the second strategy was using a level strategy with subcontracting, right? In this particular case, where we were going to use, or we we're going to produce at the lowest demand rate uh, across the six months, right? And and every single time the demand exceeds that particular number, we would subcontract the rest of the inventory. So if we look at the uh, the the demand rate here, the daily demand rate, uh, sorry, the daily demand rate here is uh, 41 for January, 39 for February, 38 for March, 57 for April, 68 for May, and 55 for June. So the lowest number here, or the, 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 the month with the lowest daily demand is 38. So we're going to, to calibrate our production process to manufacture only 38 units uh, on a daily basis. So in that, so doing that, uh, we don't have to maintain any inventory and whatever, every single time the demand exceeds 38, we can subcontract uh, it to a third party. Okay, so in this case, uh, the cost of the internal production, all right, and the, co the cost of the internal production is going to be simply, we're only going to be manufacturing 38 units per day, all right, so we're going to do that for the entire 124 days, which is going to give us, which is going to add up to a total of 4,712 units. Now, each unit, if we were to manufacture, if we were to manufacture it internally, costs us $16, right, that's 1.6 labor hours times $10 per hour, that's going to come up to $75,392 as our internal cost of production. However, our demand is 6,200. So the difference between 4,712 and 6,200 6, is the amount of units that we need to subcontract to the third party. So the number of units that we need to subcontract, the difference here is 1,488 units. So since each unit here, um, each unit here uh, costs us $20 to subcontract. 20 times 1,488 is gonna give us 29,760. So the total cost, now we don't have to hire or lay off anybody in this in this particular strategy, nor do we have to maintain inventory. So the, the total cost is simply the, the cost of subcontracting and the internal production, which adds up to 105,152, okay? So let's put that number out here as well, just so that we can refer to it later on. Okay. Now, the uh, final strategy is using the chase strategy with hiring and layoffs, all right? So in this particular strategy, we, we want to figure out how much do we need to increase the production and how much we need to decrease the production, all right? So we started off with this information with the daily demand. Um, we keep, from this, we calculated the daily production, which was simply 
uh, the daily demand, the expected demand divided by the number of working days to figure out the, the daily production. Uh, and after that, let's look at the change in production we need to make. So assuming that our daily production was the same in the December of the previous year, all right? So in this case, our daily production, we, let's say we didn't have to change anything for January because it's the same, it was the same in December. That, that's just a, a very vague assumption that we have to make, but we don't have any, any other information to, to go on here. Uh, now, February, we have to decrease the daily demand, the daily production from 41 to 39. Right? So in this case, we have to decrease it by two units uh, on a daily basis. On March, we have to decrease it by a further one. April, we have to increase it by 19. Uh, May, we have to increase it by a further 11, and June, we have to decrease it by 13, all right? So every time we need to increase the, the daily production by one, it costs us 300, and, and every time we need to decrease the daily production by one, it costs us 600. So in this case, the cost of hiring, it's every time we have to increase daily production, is going to be 300 times 19 is 5,700, 300 times 11 is 3,300, right? And uh, to the cost of Decreasing the daily production, we have to decrease it by two. Each cost is 600, so that's 1,200. Um, one times 600 is 600, and 13 times 600 is 7,800. So the total cost of hiring or increasing production is going to cost us 9,000, whereas the total cost of layoff or decreasing production is going to cost us 9,600. So in this particular case, the cost of internal production is going to be the same. In this case, it's simply 1.6 labor hours times 10 times 6,200 units because all of the units are actually being produced internally without, each of, without any of them being subcontracted. That's going to cost us uh, 9,200, uh, 9, sorry. All right. And uh, uh, the cost of hiring and, and layoff is, is 9,000 plus 9,600, which is 18,600. So the total cost using... Chase, the chase strategy with hiring and layoffs is going to cost us 117,800. So that's the third cost. So out of the three options, we can clearly see that the second one, a level strategy with subcontracting here, is the one that yields the lowest cost. All right. So hopefully that was clear. We'll do some more examples later on. So this is how you would solve a question as such.